warming up. And the first uh, question is why? Why warming up since uh, we can just get here and we are supposed to be ready to play 16 notes and, and octave and, and everything and our muscles are so uh, ready to play. But we need to remember that uh, musicians, we as sportsmen, uh, we need to uh, not only be careful with our muscles because that's something that we have to always uh, keep, keep an eye on, um, also remember that if you have, if you feel any pain, it's because your body is sending you a warning message, like, hey, something is happening. So it's like a red flag. And always when you have any type of pain, you have to just stop, reflect what is happening, and then fix it. And usually they come because we are just um, overusing parts of your body. And mostly the ones that suffer as musicians are the tendons. So what, that's why many musicians have suffered of tendonitis. So that's the, the one part we have to always keep in, keep in mind that we have to uh, warm up. So if I can just divide this warm up in different process, we have to warm up the body, the whole body. We have to also uh, warm up specifically the fingers, the wrists, and, and like the, 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 the ones, the, motor, the muscles that are in charge of the fine motor skills. And then we have to also warm up your instrument. And even they have to be mentally prepared for that piece. I call, I just usually call it for my students, like you have to um, warm up your soul. And it sounds really metabolic, like, oh, what are you just talking about? Yes, you need to definitely also warm up your soul because if you are going to be playing a Mozart piece, you need to get in that mindset. Before you start playing that piece, before you just play a first note, you have to make sure that you're mentally prepared for that Mozart. Because if, if you are not, you might start just using your muscles um, in a different, in, in, not in, in a wrong way in terms of style. So it's not that you're playing the wrong notes. You might be playing the right notes, but it's not the aesthetics. It's not what that composer needs. So that's why I always keep saying you have to warm up your soul and actually uh, get mentally prepared for that piece. So quickly, let's just go to the um, warming up your body. It's really important that when we're warming up your body, you this is just my suggestion, you start with the top to the bottom. You can also do it the other way around. But it's always good to keep track that you are stretching all your body. Um, and as musicians, we think it's just fingers, but actually those fingers are connected to muscles and tendons all the way. So it's really important that you just start with your head, always with your neck, and there are many different um, exercises that you've seen and you've heard, they are really important. My suggestion is that you create your own stretching uh, routine. So your routine doesn't need to be exactly the same of your sibling, uh, even because maybe your sibling plays violin and you play, you play cello. So you need to uh, warm up different type of muscles. So mine, for instance, is always try just to make sure that the neck is gently moved in all directions. And I usually just stay there in, at, at each side for a little while. And again, I'm just really conscious. Like I'm, I'm, I'm making my body aware that what part of the body I'm warming up. And then of course, the shoulders are really important, extremely important. We have lots of tendons here, here. That's why we get lots of injuries right here as musicians and here at the wrist. So really important, I just start here all the way. Again, I'm not just going through the whole routine. You have to create your own routine, but I just wanna point out, start from the top and just go down each uh, level at a time. Before, I, I revealed this in one of the sites I talked before, I was a musician, actually I was an actor. When I was a little kid, I, I worked as an actor. Um, I even my first conducting uh, job was uh, not a job specifically, but I was a, a theater um, director when I was only 12. And I recall one of the biggest uh, uh, takeaways from that time was how much uh, actors are aware of their bodies. Musicians, we just assume their bodies are there, but actually uh, you have to be aware about each part. And it's really important. And if I'm just going from the shoulders to the fingers that you just go, step by step, if I already did shoulders in different ways, different exercises, 
Again, you can create your own. Then I, I went, okay, I'm just going to the four arms. This is really good for violinists, violists, because you're going to be having this all the time. So this is really important. Both sides, please, all the time. And constantly, okay, I'm, I'm going right now to the elbows. And this uh, is really good. Like you're just doing this uh, movement. is extremely good for to warm up your whole arm. So again, really conscious. I'm just going into, into wrist and I don't push. I just always do gentle movements, but I make sure I do them all. And if you see me when I'm just at the parking lot at the UW, you see me like I just try to get a little bit earlier and I try to start with these in, the, in my car. So if you're driving close by and you see me like driving and doing this, oh, that's Maestro Molano warming up in his car. I pay attention on my road, but I did, I do uh, use that time to start stretch, stretch as much as I can. Again, I'm just being conscious. I'm at the wrist, then fingers, really important. Don't be so um, rude with yourself, really gentle. And you're gonna see when is that place where you say, okay, not too much. And slowly, step by step. Then I go down, something I learned from actors, they use this jumping all the time. I don't know if you have seen this, this thing, I love it. I always do this when I get to rehearsals. Before concerts, wow, I do a lot of this all the time. So the muscles start to just, we need lots of blood flow. It's really important. And again, it's not just here because you might say, oh, if you're a pianist, you only need like your muscles right here to be warmed up. No, the whole machine needs to be oiled. So. Um, and then you go down and you have, there are de different exercises. I, I like this one because as a clarinet player years ago, this was a place where I actually got lots of pain at some point. Years just being seated the wrong way, like something like this, when my spine was just completely like this, um, affected me at some point. I started doing a little bit of Alexander technique, a little bit of uh, all those other things that helped me find the correct and comfortable sitting position. Everyone, please find a seat close by, or if you're seated at this point, and sit first properly. Right now, sit, relax. So the difference, it's really important you point, you notice this. When I mentioned relax, you did this. That means, your properly position is not relaxed and that's a big mistake a properly position needs to be relaxed so that's where you have to start going and, and crossing the line of okay this is too much that's that way this is too much i feel here really well it's still properly but at the same time i feel relaxed because the the definition of and we, we are just avoiding tension and and, and that tension is gonna be created by uh, tiny moments when you just move your muscles around. So that's why you have to always find a way to sit or stand up. And I do recommend to practice standing for almost all instruments except for bassoons, cellos, and pianists. Uh, but the rest of us, we can definitely um, practice standing, but always finding that it's comfortable, relaxed, and proper. Something I, I do a lot and, and many musicians kind of like laugh at me because I always uh, keep stretching all the way to my toes. So I, I kind of like stretch these like this. I, I do this because I, I think the whole body, it's a machine and I, I need to make sure that when I'm playing, my whole body is aware about each muscle. So that's really important. And um, when you're uh, seated, you can also do an additional warm up with your like, tiny muscles, you're just ready to play, and then you start, you, you already did neck, but how about you just do these muscles, these tiny muscles. So the fingers, again, you can warm them up. Sometimes even have these warm pads that they have, I don't know if you have, if you have seen it. So they have warm pads uh, or even gloves, or I, I've seen even musicians wearing a big winter jacket before they start playing. So, and, I, and it works for them. So. They sweat a lot, but they, that's that's definitely that definitely helps them to uh, just be be warmed up. Wrists are really important for all musicians, and when we are learning an instrument, we are starting to use new muscles. 
So those new muscles might be tired at some point. So if you feel a little bit of a t fatigue, it's fine. You can just stop and just resume. What you are not supposed to have is pain. So the difference be be between fatigue and pain is really important. You feel like, oh, I'm tired. That's fine. You're tired. Just go have a rest, you know, take a nap or something and get back to practice. And something I learned from doctors, good friends, they said, there is nobody who knows your body better than yourself. So when you're starting to get sick, you are the first one noticing. It's not your mom saying, hey, your eyes look a little bit. No, you notice something is going on. So that's why I, I recommend when you're practicing, if you start to feel any pain, okay, stop, make yourself aware what part that is. Uh, am I, am I being maybe playing too many octaves or I've been playing many, maybe too many short notes or new key. That's a really important, a new key. Um, let's say as a, as a string player, you, um, you are in the, you've been playing for four or five years, let's say that, or four years. And you feel really comfortable with G major, C major, D major, A major, um, even E major, all of a sudden, um, oh, Charlie, you, you love also C major and F major and basses as well. But then all of a sudden you got to play A flat major. So the muscles you used are not the same. If you look at when I'm warming up in the morning, if I played C major, I just use these muscles. But if I just go into C sharp major, it's different. So the, the muscles are just a little bit different because my hands, move from something like this. Let me just show you my, my hands in C major, okay? Here it is. This is no, C major. This is um, C sharp major in two different positions. One, two. This is my D major, and this is my D minor. You know what I mean? So you, you, you notice how much my muscles start to, to change. And that's why you have to really understand, okay, something is going on here. Maybe I'm playing in a key that I haven't played in the past. Uh, and then I have new muscles involved. Keep in mind what muscles you're using. Ergonomics. I don't know if you have heard that word, ergonomics. So ergonomics is basically the relationship a worker has with his work place or workstation, let's say that. So for us as musicians, it's the relationship you have with an instrument. So if your instrument is the piano, then you have to be, you have to find that connection, that, that relationship, the ergonomics of your body has to have to adapt to an instrument that, to be honest, it, it's, it doesn't look natural. Look, my hands look like this and the piano look like this. How about a, 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 a violin? Do you think the violin shape is natural to your neck? It isn't. It's beautiful. I mean, a violin shape, it's, a violin body is just beautiful. It's not designed for your uh, shoulder. It's not designed for your neck. That's why you just use the shoulder rest. And, and some of you don't use it, but then you start. So it, it, that's what I'm, uh, it's really important about ergonomics. So please make sure your body starts to adapt to a rear, completely unnatural shape. If you're playing a tuba, that's not natural at all. It's just a long tube that it has been just bended and bended and bended and bended with a big bell and a big mouthpiece. So, and, and then tubes have to ad adjust everything to make that instrument feel ergonomically uh, compatible <laughs> with him or with her. And that's, that's not an easy task. Think about the ergonomics of your instrument specifically. And something really important, if you're growing up, as most of you are, not me, but most of you, you might need to switch sizes. And then when you're moving from a two, a half size to a three quarter size instrument, you might start having new muscles involved or some of them will be really under stress. So make sure you take it easy because it's a new, it's heavier, really heavier, the instrument is heavier and you have to deal with different. Then you have to um, warm up your instrument meaning you have to tune your instrument, you have to put brass on your bow, you have to use the valve, the valve oil. If you play a brass instrument, you have to clean up your instrument first with a cloth. So that's warming up your instrument. Even some instruments, when you take them out of the case, you might need to just, I'm, I'm used to just do it by, with my clarinet. I just put 
together my clarinet and I just put it on my jacket for like a five minutes. And uh, somebody said, okay, this guy is crazy. He's in love on his clarinet. Yes, I was in love with my clarinet, but I was just giving my clarinet a little bit of warm. And, and you can't imagine the difference because the keys are just metal and they, they were really cold. Even in a warm weather, th those keys are cold in the case. So warm in instrument up. So then you have to warm up your ears. And I'm, I haven't even played my instrument yet, but you also need to warm up your ears. So sometimes if you play, for instance, a brass instrument, starting with your uh, mouthpiece first is a really good way to go. So you start like buzzing a lot of your chops as, as you all do. And then you start just doing scales and long notes, really long notes only with your mouthpiece. And you are not only uh, warming up your chops, you're actually warming up your ears. So the intervals. It's a third, it's a minor third, it's an octave. So it's really important when we're warming up that you take uh, keys that you will be working on later on. So like you, you don't just start doing all your scales, C major, C sharp major, and so on and so forth. And then you skip B major, but the piece you need to play is in B major. So definitely look for that key when you're just starting your, your warm up um, and create your own scales routine. I know you get lots of uh, scales from your teacher and those are really great because they've put lots of thought on what is the best fingering, the, what is the best structure in terms of rhythms, but you have to, you, you can also create your own. So they give you, they give you a basic one. They say for, for instance, you, you can just create different rhythms or you can just actually create I made it up. So, and that's why you just, I said like creating your own routine. The reasons, you, you need to make it interesting. If you don't make interesting scales in our pages, you're gonna be bored. If you are bored, it's not gonna work. This is a beautiful career, but um, as any other, it's tough. And if you don't love, and if you don't enjoy doing scales, then it's gonna be a really hard job. And, and I, I do enjoy scales, but every time I go to scale or to the page, I just do something different. So I'm just doing C major. So no, they just start thirds. Something like that, you're like just creating some new structure for you that makes sense. Or you start adding rhythms, but again, it's warming up your ears <clears throat> um, uh, completely. Okay, so then you have to start also thinking about warming up your your mindset for a piece you're working on. I, I call it warming up your soul. So let's say you're gonna be playing, I'm gonna be conducting a Brahms symphony or a Mozart symphony as we talked about symphony last week. Before I come here and start uh, working on, let's say um, symphony number 35 or 30, 36 for instance. That one, before I go to that symphony, I listen to some Mozart piece, chamber music, for instance, or piano music, because I'm warming up my mindset for Mozart. So that's something I do and I truly recommend. So I can just come here and take a sonata for piano or something that uh, is, uh, that's for instance, C major sonata. So that, that might help to, to create, uh, um, um, let's say an aesthetic for this, um, for the, that was the one I just played. That's really specific to Mozart. If I would actually uh, start warming up with a Brahms piece, my Mozart will look like really different. So I mean, I mean, actually I need more of my body to play into Brahms. I can't just play Brahms like this. Like, uh, I, I need something like this. That's for instance, Brahms. But if I start doing this, let me just, let me just try it out. So like, oh. And I come to Mozart. Oh, no, it's, it's a symphony, the symphony, sorry. Let's take the symphony, uh, for instance. Um, this is a 
the wrong motor. Just because I started with that Brahms. If I would start with this one, most likely when I play the symphony, it's gonna sound something like this. Um, because I have a mindset for Mozart. That's what I'm saying with warming up your soul or warming up your mindset. So um, I totally recommend that. If I'm working uh, on whatever composer, I look for other pieces by the same composer, ideally from a different uh, type of ensemble to warm up my aesthetics. Okay, that's how Mahler should sound. If I start playing lots of Mozart and then I go to play, to practice uh, symphony number five or four by Mahler, it sounds just like I'm just, I just, I'm wearing my tennis shoes to go for a, a job interview. And, and oh, I'm so sorry. Or I'm just driving to my office and I found out I'm in my slippers. Oh, so like I'm just using the, the wrong shoes for certain activities. I think that's, that's something I, I want to reinforce because of, it's really important to have the, the right mindset. In terms of the specifics of warming up your instrument, Always long notes. I, I, I'm always re recommending these long notes. And you might say those are boring. They, they might not be. So if you start just in a really mid range, not going to really uh, like a fifth position on the G string, or you start playing the top notes on your, on your horn, or, or you're just with your clarinet or your flute playing the bottom notes. No, just middle, like mid range, long notes. And you start just going, a little bit up, a little bit down. Like just increase in the range. So at some point you, you have a better understanding of your sound. So again, if I'm just warming up, I'm not starting with big octaves here or there. I just start right here. Like something that is <coughs> comfortable for my body that I, that I do warm up each part of my body. And then I go into the uh, hard job of octaves or thirds or whatever. Have a great weekend, a great Memorial Day weekend and stay safe. See you soon.